Welcome back to the Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Gerard Manley Hopkins, who was, of course, an English poet and a Jesuit priest who lived from 1844 to 1889. He was, you perhaps know by now, not particularly famous or financially successful during his life, but uh, his influence posthumously uh, made him one of the most beloved and renowned and probably important poets to write in English in the last, say, 200 or so years. In fact, he was a huge influence on people like T.S. Eliot, Dylan Thomas, the Ridge Auden, Cecil Day Lewis, um, many others. The poem that I'm going to read today is a poem brought to you by another one of our editors at Forma. As I mentioned in the last couple of weeks, we asked our editors to share a poem from the fall for a feature for our subscribers. And this comes from one of our associate editors named Emily Andrews. You might know Emily in her role for the Center for Lit, where she works with her family. She is a great editor, and I wanted to share some of her thoughts on this particular poem. And this poem by Hopkins is called Spring and Fall to a Young Child. It goes like this. Margaret, are you grieving over Golden Grove, unleaving? Leaves like the things of man you with your fresh thoughts care for, can you? Ah, as the heart grows older, it will come to such sights colder by and by, nor spare a sigh, though worlds of wan wood leaf me a lie. And yet you will weep, and know why. Now no matter, child, the name, sorrow's springs are the same. Nor mouth had, no nor mind expressed what heart heard of, ghost guessed. It is the blight man was born for. It is Margaret you mourn for. That poem obviously has a lot of the customary um, formal flourishes that you'll see in Hopkins' poetry. You'll see the, the playing with rhymes and meters, mixing it up a little bit here and there, the wordplay, the alliteration, the assonance, things like that. But I wanted to share with you what Emily has to say. Her two paragraphs are lovely. So this is what Emily has to say about this poem. Quote, As much as I love the crisp days and bright colors of autumn, I always dread its coming. The beauty signals a warning. Dreary winter marches steadily on. Similarly, in Spring and Fall, the poem's speaker observes a young Margaret in the spring of her childhood, weeping over fallen leaves. The fiery beauty of Golden Grove is passing away, leaving behind a pile of mealy rot and revealing the bare bones of winter. According to the speaker, it is not necessarily the change in scenery that causes Margaret's sorrow, but the fact that things must pass away at all. In later years, he says, she will come to know she shares this blight, a disease, with the trees. Because of an earlier fall, she too will meet their fate. And yet... Just as the line, and yet you will weep and know why, breaks the poem's pattern of couplets, Hopkins hints that Margaret too may break free from this pattern of decay and death. A Shakespearean sonnet usually poses a question in the first 12 lines and an answer in the final two. The 15th line of Hopkins' poem, however, breaks it free from the bounds of sonnet structure. There's no problem to be solved. In spite of the poem's solemn tone, a solution undergirds the very nature of things. Autumn is not a blight, and leaves are not actually things of man. Spring will come again. End quote. Mm. Couldn't have said it better. There's definitely no way I could have said it better than that. Um, our editors did a great job on this project. I hope you subscribe, I guess. Um, if you want to hear more like this from our editors, um, you can go to formerjournal.com for that. But let me read this one more time for you before I sign off for today. Spring and Fall by Hopkins. Margaret, are you grieving over Golden Grove unleaving? Leaves like the things of man you with your fresh thoughts care for, can you? Ah, as the heart grows older, it will come to such sights colder by and by, nor spare a sigh, though worlds of wan wood leaf may lie. And yet, you will weep and know why. Now no matter, child, the name. 
Sorrow's springs are the same. Nor mouth had, no, nor mind expressed what heart heard of, ghost guessed. It is the blight man was born for. It is Margaret you mourn for. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Thank you.